What's up YouTube, welcome back to another video with Bav Life. In this one, we're going to be doing the big three on the LSB E46 M3. Now we're going to be reinforcing the rear subframe with all new bushings in the rear end, refreshing the whole Vanos unit, as well as replacing the rod bearings and doing a bunch of other miscellaneous maintenance items as we go. We'll be doing all this work at our new shop called Purist Motors. Check us out on Instagram and messages for any inquiries. We'll update you guys with more information as we go, but for now, let's get started with the big three. You guys know these E46 are notorious for these subframes. The subframe right here, like the mounting points, cracking and eventually just breaking the whole trunk down you can see he has uh, a leak here so we're also gonna replace the seals here and all that as we move forward towards the front we're gonna be putting callus headers on this car this control arm needs to be replaced just to make sure that when the car hits the ground it's ready to rock and roll it's like these guys went into hibernation or something them after four years finally doing this big three ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine yeah, see this is what I like Like the American flag. Right? Every day. Rust on that. This is why my car doesn't have anymore, because 200,000 miles. Kids, don't drive your car in the winter. Not in the Northeast. Look at this. Oh! <laughs> up the rotor screw. You know eBay gotta come out. Bro, look at that. Oh. You guys probably can't see too well, but that is a crack. They can see that. It's going down this way. It's going under this, this, this bowl here. But we gotta clean up all these mounting points to really find out. We got the suffering on. We're gonna get to replace all these bushings because this thing was crusty.
all, all you know is brand new ball joints. Next up, suffering bushings. Well, look how much force you need to get these bushings up. This is insane. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. Just when you thought there were no more cracks. Yeah. Honestly, man. That's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah, just slide this back. We got the gas tank out, we got the suffering mount. What we gotta do now, obviously, is we clean these mounting points here. They were cracked. Uh, they were definitely cracked. There's a, there's a nice crack right here. You can see that. It's a crack coming over here, around the area where the stud went in. And there's a crack 
right here. It's going like around the area where the stud one goes in. So it was, I, I personally think this is like a, these are mild cracks. The rear were clean. Uh, actually, a mine is like a hairline little fracture right here and a hairline fracture there. But uh, nonetheless, we're gonna grind that down, get some welding, seam sealing and painting. Let's get it. Cutting out these squares in the trunk. I'm welding the sheet metal under together, and then I'm just gonna weld this on top of it. That's basically what we're doing right now. So we're finishing up the reinforcement. Spider-Man? Superman? Felix just welded that. Yeah, I cut it. I welded that top layer to the to the second layer there, and now I'm gonna spray over and seam seal it. Come on, guys.
Oh, it says no replace like a whole computer. Right? Oh! oh. <laughs> We got the valve cover off. I just aligned the engine at TDC. Right now, we're actually about to start removing the Vano solenoid and stuff to prep the car for the Vanos. Try to, I try to be nice. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> That's fully retarded there. Right? Just the rocking back and forth, you just tell. Yeah. And the bass on holes. Oof. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh. Four problems with that break. These are the bolts that you need to replace the old style hex bolts. These are Torx. This is the bolt that holds the upper uh, timing chain guide. Got a new one of these. And as I assumed, they literally all break. The other piece is sitting down in there. This is the other part of it. This car has 160,000 miles. This was broken. 
My car had 230 when I did it, 237. I've seen them a lot, like they break a lot, but I didn't notice how often that that actually happens. I think any time, any timing components are gonna fail, it could be dangerous. Uh, anyone that builds engines or that fixes engines, they'll, they'll probably say the same. Just think with these cars, you get really lucky that it's not in a really effed up spot. So when they break, probably not as catastrophic, but it can cause problems. Definitely change this out for the baseline one. The baseline one is great. This is the exhaust side. That's the side that breaks. Chances of this breaking in that spot where it's a lot thicker than in this thin plastic piece is very slim. clean bearing parts so we ordered the rattle repair kit but we didn't get it it wasn't in the package i'm guessing there was a mistake on their end because we are in a crunch for time we are just gonna put these back it wasn't rattling to begin with so i don't believe it's gonna start rattling now uh, but in the future this will definitely be something else that will probably open up the car and, and do fully reseal the new o-rings the base on all on disc, uh, all these O-rings here. Now I'll start, start putting the engine back together. First start. I just finished up the manuals. We just plugged up everything just to start the car. I want to make sure it's timed properly and that the engine sounds good. We're done with the manuals. We're going to pull a couple of other things back off, like the fan clutch and all that stuff. We're going to get started with the rod bearings. We got headers to install. We have motor mounts and all the other associated gaskets and stuff that are included in the job. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. Now we're draining the block. You guys can see here, I'm actually removing this uh, this valve for the uh, secondary air pump. So we got bank one. Section out, say goodbye. This is bank one, sensor one.
Come on, man. We're gonna change the whole uh, CPV. It has a new O-ring on it. We figured this preventative maintenance is not leaking, but these tend to leak on these, so I'm not gonna wait. Oh, I thought that was gonna be worse than it actually was. You'll see it'll come down and it looks almost like a rear main seal leak. It, the oil will kind of just sit right here and all down here. Or you'll think even it's a valve cover gasket leak, but it's not. So, you guys can see this is called a constant pressure valve. And this is a pain in the ass to get to when the headers are in the way and when you got your shelf frame. So here's the new one, here's the old one. You can see this O-ring is like flattened and this one's bulging out. This is gonna provide a better seal than this old one is eventually gonna cross the way. All right, we just had one. Congratulations, yeah. congratulations. Twins. Yeah, it was all the other one. Sorry. Right, he's, he's better at ball. Thank you, buddy. Headers in, O2 sensors in, now it's time. Yo, that was close. Cylinder six. This is the bottom cylinder six, and this is uh, top one. Um, obviously, there's like wear here. There's maybe like a little bit of copper, I think, there on the side, but nothing crazy. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. So my assumption would be, I doubt that these, this car got 160,000 miles, so I doubt that these weren't changed. I think at some point, they probably changed under that rod bearing recall. On the plastic gauge right now, and we're just gonna check the cylinder six clearance. How's that crank be? <laughs> so that's 0 0.002. That's in inches. We converted over. The clearance size, I believe, is 0 0.03 to 0 0.07 in 
inches, that's 0 0.001 to 0 0.003. Anywhere in between there is acceptable clearance. So uh, you can see that this uh, this is just one of the cylinders we do, we're do we doing right now. That's good clearance. So we're gonna continue now. I'm gonna put assembly lube on the top bearing and then put it on the bottom and then retorque these ARP fasteners. And we're gonna move on to the next cylinder. Well, we just finished putting all the new rod bearings in, rod bolts, everything's torqued onto spec. Um, we're gonna spin the crank in a bit, make sure everything is good. And then I'm gonna put the oil pump back on, obviously torque everything and put everything back on. So here's a visual of all the bearings. Most cylinders had a little bit of copper on the edges. The bottom of cylinder four was the worst with the most amount of wear being shown. Considering it, the car had 160,000 miles, I'm pretty happy it's done. Now we can fully send it. My boy Chris. That's it. Set that up. Overall it drives great. Desperately though, it needs a tune. So we will be talking to Hassan from HDE. Yeah, when you just take these uh, these cats out and put these headers, it's just like a bunch of power missing. Other than that, uh, surprisingly no check engine lights right now for any of the catalyst stuff. Car driving pretty solid. The rear end feels pretty good. Feels almost like a new car gun. You really can't tell the difference. It's crazy how just I guess some maintenance and bushings and suspension and stuff can really make a difference. So we're signing off this. Next video should be either us tuning this or the interior getting installed. So we're gonna keep this rolling. Dog life out, baby.